today is 20th august 2020 now we will discuss emp for items we will find emp for items that have a salvage value up to previous class we have discussed if any object is unsold any product is unsold then we get a dead loss now there will not be dead loss we will get some value back okay i am reading out a problem please try to write it with me take short notes just like i do okay prepare your copy take short notes an ice cream retailer buys ice cream at a cost of 5 per cup so buying price or buying cost is 5 per cup sells it for that means selling price is 8 per cup any remaining unsold at the end of the day can be disposed at a salvage price of 2 per cup that means unsold cups are disposed at rupees 2 per cup okay now past sales have ranged between 15 to 18 cups per day that means the probabilities that the number of cups will be sold will vary between 15 to 18 there is no reason to believe that the sales volume will take on any other magnitude in future that means it should not go beyond 15 to 18 so the sales will remain between 15 to 18 find the emv if the sale history has the following probabilities so probability says the probability of getting sold number of cups 15 probability is 0 0.10 16 0 0.20 17 0 0.40 18 0 0.30 so the number of cups to be sold is this number of cups to be sold and these are their probabilities okay so now we have to find out the emv or we have to choose the correct decision alternative how many cups the ice cream little ice cream retailer should buy that is the question how many cups the ice cream retailer should stock that is the problem now here everything will be same everything will be same just your payoff to be determined in proper way you have to find a proper formula to find out the payoff so if we want to find out the conditional payoff then cp will be the formula will be 8 minus 5 into s where s is stock and d is demand so when demand is greater than stock then everything will be sold when demand is greater than equal to stock then all of the stock will be sold out and we get three rupees for each one for s number of cups we get three into s that is the conditional profit when demand is greater than equal to s but situation changes when d less than equal to s that means 
the stock is higher demand is lower there will be unsold copies so in such case what will be our payoff is 8 into d the much demand will give us 8 rupees each selling price minus we have to subtract the buying price so we are buying s number and each gets 5 rupees so 5 into s and there are some unsold and they will give you 2 each so 2 into s minus d unsold copies or unsold cups into 2 that will be the payoff so this will be the condition of conditional profit okay is it clear up to this point sir hmm. hello sir mm -hmm. so can you explain why 5 into s one so why 5 into s here 8 into d minus 5 into s so d is d is demand, demand. that means stock. demand means the much demand that will get sold out for each one we will get 8 rupees because the selling price is 8 okay is this much clear if the market has demand d then this d will be sold out and for each sold out copies we get 8 rupees each because the selling price is 8 okay please respond uh, yes sir okay then we have brought s number of cups each cost 5 rupees so our buying cost is 5s okay. and if there is an unsold that will be s minus d that will give you at the end of the day 2 rupees okay. so this is how this equation comes now when you find out this conditional profit you have to find out the profit the conditional profit table so you know how to find out conditional profit tables you have to write possible stock action or decision alternatives along the columns and this is your probability this is your event event that number of copies sold will be 15 16 17 18 and the retailer should buy 15 16 17 18 now we have to fill this up these probabilities are given as 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0.3 so now please do it yourself in very quick method and tell me what will be the this digits calculate very quickly Nadim Johar, are you present? Mohammad Nadim Johar. Okay, tell me what is the value of this one? What is the value of this? 15 plus 15. 
Yes, again. 120 सर 120 सही में मुझे तो नहीं लगता थ्री इंटू फिफ्टीन सिंपली देन नेक्स्ट दिस वन हम 16 खरीदेंगे 15 बिकेगा वन विल बी अनसोल्ड ये फॉर्म उठाएगा देखो डी लेस देन एस ये फॉर्म उठाएगा डी लेस देन एस है ये कंडीशन डिमांड फिफ्टीन का स्टॉक सिक्सटीन फिफ्टी वन नो हम्म अगेन फोर्टी नो इट्स नॉट फोर्टी देखो क्या होगा डिमांड फिफ्टीन का है फिफ्टीन बिकेगा तो एट इंटू फिफ्टीन माइनस हमने खरीदेंगे कितना सिक्सटीन फाइव इंटू सिक्सटीन प्लस आंसोल्ड कितना रहेगा एक इसको करके देखो कितना आता है फोर्टी टू ओके सिमिलरली दिस वन विल बाई सेवेंटीन फिफ्टीन विल गेट No sold, and two will be unsold. Thirty-seven. Thirty-nine. Nine. Thirty-nine. Eighteen. Ka. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Next, here we'll buy fifteen. The the demand will be sixteen. Then fifteen. हम खरीदेंगे मतलब retailer fifteen खरीदेगा sixteen का demand है. तो कितना बिके? पहले पहले रहेगा. पहले जैसे रहेगा सबके सब बिक जाएगा. तो हो जाएगा forty five. Similar इसका भी देखो ऐसा ही होगा. Seventeen demand है fifteen. रिटेलर स्टॉक कर रहे हैं सबके सब बिक जाएगा तो इसमें भी 45 इसमें भी सेम होगा 18 का डिमांड है लेकिन स्टॉक है 15 का तो सारे के सारे बिक, बिक जाएंगे तो ये हो जाएगा फिर से 45 अब इधर आते हैं 16 स्टॉक है और 16 बिक जाएगा सबके सब बिक जाएगा तो इधर कितना होगा 16 इंटू थ्री फोर्टी एट फोर्टी 17 स्टॉक करेंगे 16 बिकेगा नेक्स्ट 18 स्टॉक कर 16 बिकेगा तो 42 वेरी गुड वेरी गुड ये नेक्स्ट 48 ये फोर्टी एट ये फिफ्टी वन ये साइड वाला फोर्टी एट फोर्टी एट वेरी गुड फोर्टी एट फोर्टी एट फिफ्टी वन फिफ्टी फोर फिफ्टी वन फिफ्टी फोर फिफ्टी वेरी गुड सो नाउ वी कैन जस्ट डू लाइक वी डू यू हैव टू मल्टीप्लाई प्रोबेबिलिटीज विद एसोसिएटेड नंबर्स and then you have to add so let us do it you have to draw a separate table these are stock actions 15 
probability okay these are <coughs> events this is 15 16 17 18 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.3 okay now if we multiply then here will be 45 into 0 0.1 4.5 here 4.2 3.9 3 3.6 here 9 9.6 9 8.4 here 18 19.2 20.4 19.2 here 13.5 14.4 and here 16.2 okay i am multiplying all these rows with associated probabilities all these elements of the row is multiplied by the associated probabilities then we will find out emv so we will add them up by column and we will find out EMV for each decision alternative so it becomes 45 this becomes 47.4 this becomes 48.6 and this becomes 47.4 so along this the maximum EMV can be found here 48.6 that is the EMV so to get the maximum payoff he will choose the associated stock action 17 so our answer will be the ice cream retailer ice cream retailer will buy or stock 17 number of cups okay so the procedure is same what you have to find out is there will be another formula here where this portion is new you have to find out the payoff because of the unsold copies that you have to add that's it so i hope uh, you understand everybody if uh, there is any question on this topic please uh, say to me now otherwise we will advance to next topic no questions that means we can advance to our next topic now up to this point we have to take only one decision so these all are single stage problems now as per syllabus we will advance into multi-stage decision making problems that problems are solved by decision tree method okay. so we will learn to draw decision tree And we will learn decision tree analysis to find out appropriate decision when there are sequential decision problems. That means if you take one decision, then there will be some alternatives. After that, you have to choose another decision. There will be several alternatives. After that, there will be fewer more decisions. So the decision making is not a single one. Till date, what we have done, there were four options or three options you have to choose any one of them now you have to choose one then something event will occur then again you have to choose another decision so sequential decision you have to make multiple decision stages are there so decision tree basically it is a graphical representation of decision process indicating
डिसीशन ऑल्टरनेटिव स्टेट ऑफ नेचर और इवेंट्स एंड ऑल्सो द प्रोबेबिलिटीज अटैच टू ईच स्टेट ऑफ नेचर and as well as conditional benefits of each decisions now and also losses too now <clears throat> this decision tree consist of consist of a network network of nodes and branches now there are two types of node are used number 1 is decision node number 2 or the second one are event node or chances node uh, just we go with event chances will be chance means probability that will be you know shown just below the nodes or below the arrows now this decision node represented by a square and the event nodes represent by a circle now the alternative courses of action originate from decision node are main branches they goes forward from left to right but after each terminal of the network associated payoffs will be shown and when we go for the decisions we will start from right to left remember this thing construct network from left to right put comma put uh conditional payoffs at the terminal nodes and analysis will progress from right to left and this is also known as roll back or fold back now we will uh, show this with an example suppose we have please excuse me for a minute i'll drink some water okay let us get back to the problem i will show you the payoff directly for the ease of understanding 
these are your alternatives you have two options probabilities are also given and these are your events so this may be high demand this may be low demand we call it s1 we call it s2 this is probability 0. Point, oh i am sorry this is probability this is 0. 0.6 and this is 0. 0.4 okay and we have two decision alternative one is this is say we call one we call it say two or we call it a decision a decision b which are basically produce 25 unit produce 75 unit now here it gives us profit 4000 here gives 10,000 here is 2,000 and here is minus 5,000 okay so these are the just given profit table and you need to draw a network network for decision tree analysis so if we want to draw the tree how does it look like initially you have to take a decision either from one or two if we take one or two decision then two things may occur so this decision node is square and after you take a decision the output will be event two events may occur either one or two so if we take decision a or if we take decision b then what occurs s1 occurs or s2 occurs if you choose s1 it gives you profit of 4000 if you choose uh, s2 it will give 2000 for a and for b if s1 occurs we get 10000 profits otherwise we get minus 5000 profit so here we will write out the probabilities it has 0 0.6 probability it has it has 0 0.4 probability again it has 0 0.6 it has 0 0.4 probabilities okay so this this is decision node these are chance nodes okay now what happens then this is your decision either if you take decision a then something occurs if you take decision b then something occurs so these names can be you know put a different also we have we have been put x and y also this can be done x and y also it doesn't matter what matters is this we have to take a decision either a or b if we take a this event x occurs x can be this or can be this and y if we take decision b this occurs and which affects either this or this okay so this is called decision node and these are called chance or event node okay now how have how we have to calculate the payoff that is what we have to write so now emv for a we have to find out emv for each nodes so for this for x node we have written a x we could have put a also uh, no issues so for that If we choose x, 
then mv of x will be equal to how much 0 0.6 into associated pay of 4000 0 0.6 into 4000 plus 0 0.4 into 2000 that is equal to how much 3200 okay 0.6 into the payoff plus 0.4 into the payoff and together this 3200 will be the payoff of the chance node x now if we calculate the payoff now this uh, emv for this y node so emv at y node will be equal to 0 0.6 into 10,000 plus here you can see 0 0.4 into we have 4200 found out the emv for both of the nodes x and y and now we, we we need to take a decision which one we are going to take so looking at this we can find that emv for y yields the maximum value 4000 which is greater than 3200 so because the payoff or the emv of y is better that's why we will choose the decision alternative b okay so we have to name all these nodes there is only one decision node so this node will be you know uh, given number one and if there are other decision nodes then that will be given number two so here there is only node so we are numbering it as one now there are two decisions a and b we have found that for decision b we find maximum payoff so we will choose decision b which is which is produce here written produce 75 units that will be chosen okay